Pakistan's economy has hardly ever been a thriving economy unlike its neighbours India and China which have ensured a fast-paced growth over the years. But for the last few months, its economy has been in a free fall, on the verge of default. Islamabad is now heavily dependent on the bailout provided by the International Monetary Fund and high-interest loans secured from friendly nations like Saudi Arabia and China. On 29 June 2023, the IMF agreed to aid Pakistan with a $3 billion standby agreement package. IMF के साथ जो पिछले कई माह पर मोहित जो हमारी इंटरेक्शन थी बातचीत चल रही थी वो अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह आज एक इंदाई मस्बत नतीजे पर पहुंची है but with a bunch of terms and conditions that the international body is being very strict about. Why is it that the IMF is being so stringent with Pakistan and why does it eventually keep injecting money into the country? More importantly, a country which has a GDP of a little over $350 billion, a population of 230 million people, has a debt of over $75 billion. So how is it expected to survive with just a $3 billion bailout package? Let's figure out the story behind Pakistan's fumbling economy. These visuals from Pakistan are indicative of how grim the situation has been. People fighting for food, random power cuts, staggering inflation. Pakistan has not only depleted its foreign reserves but has also been borrowing money with high interest rate loans. The country has borrowed large sums of money from China and Saudi Arabia at very high interest rates since the countries lending these loans are taking a huge amount of risk. Now the problem is that they are borrowing in US dollars, over which they have of course very little control. And their domestic currency, which is the Pakistani rupee, is very weak and it has depreciated significantly against the US dollar. In June 2023, the State Bank of Pakistan revealed that its foreign exchange further decreased by $179 million and this decrease was due to the external debt repayments. Earlier in Jan 2023, the country's foreign exchange reserves were at its lowest since 2014. High tariff rates, political unpredictability, terrorist concerns, stringent tax and interest rate regulations and demanding security clearance requirements are some of the reasons why foreign investors have been wary of making any investments in the country or fund domestic enterprises. While Pakistan has been able to save itself from defaulting and import bans time and again, it has been unable to create that kind of revenue which meets its requirements to pay off the external debts as well as keep the country afloat. Today, our situation is that we are giving the debts on our debts. Most of its earnings is just used to pay off a fraction of interest rate on debts to countries it has taken loans from, creating a prolonged balance of payment crisis. So much so that Pakistan has had to pay close to $25 billion this year alone. But from where? Now, Pakistan recorded an inflation of a whopping 24.5% in December 2022. Prices of food items such as flour, sugar, ghee have shot up manifolds. The high demand of wheat flour has caused chaos across the country and shortage of food and essential items. Pakistan had failed to increase taxes and cut government subsidies as suggested by the IMF to bolster the economy. So dire was the situation in 2023 that the Pakistan government accepted that it does not have the funds for energy as it's heavily dependent on imported fuel. It even directed malls and shops to shut at 8pm. Experts have also associated the rise in food staples with last year's floods, which caused extensive damage to agricultural land, livestock and thousands of kilometres of road and other infrastructure. This is partially right, as inflation touched a record high after the floods in August 2022. But the war in Ukraine also halted grain supply to a number of countries, including Pakistan, resulting in a sharp increase in prices of food grains. 
So now, the IMF has come back into the picture. After months of deliberations and negotiations, it has agreed to a bailout package of $3 billion, which will be paid over nine months. So what's a bailout? A bailout is nothing but a financial assistance given to a failing economy to save it from collapse. Pakistan had been suffering to secure the $1.1 billion tranche, a part of the $7 billion bailout package from the IMF. This bailout was approved by the International Fund body in 2019 and has given Pakistan $3.9 billion of it as of August 2022. However, the latest $3 billion bailout, which is not part of the previous deal, is the 23rd bailout Islamabad has received in 75 years. This is the most that any country across the world has ever received. So why was the IMF so reluctant to give out the money it has already promised Pakistan? And why has it finally agreed? Well, time and again, Pakistan has failed to meet the conditions set by the IMF to bolster the country's economy and bring it back on track. These conditions include increasing the energy prices, which is going to impact the consumers, commit fully to the market, determined exchanges, which means removing controls and eliminating multiple exchange rate practices in different markets, increase taxes, central banks have been tasked to reduce inflation, reduce unbudgeted spending. If these conditions are not met, the IMF becomes reluctant in handing out free money. But as we saw in this case, eventually the IMF did bail them out. Why is that? Well, one of the main reasons is that Pakistan is a nuclear state and it's in no one's interest that it descends into a rogue nation with nuclear arsenal. Now coming to the final part, will this $3 billion loan really solve the country's problems? Experts have painted a gloomy picture saying the government must reconsider its priorities from finding short-term solutions to more sustainable reforms. Pakistan is expected to hold its general elections in October 2023, but many wonder if it even has the money to do so. And political stability in the coming years is going to be absolutely critical in deciding what is in store for Pakistan's economy. The IMF deal, which is subject to approval by the board by mid-July, offers only some temporary respite to Pakistan. For more such content, stay tuned to Money Control.